This video, once again, brought to you by Squarespace. Whether it is a domain, website, or online store you need, be sure to make your next move with Squarespace. Go to www.squarespace.com and tack on a forward slash science studio for 10% off your first purchase. So this video right here, a classic comparison between the Apple MacBook Pro 2017 base model and the Dell XPS 13. Now, the Dell XPS 13 is actually almost fully loaded. I don't have the one terabyte NVMe SSD in here, just the 512 gig, but it does have 16 gigs of RAM and the Core i7-7500U. On the opposite side, this MacBook Pro 13 inch model is the most basic of the MacBook Pros that you can buy. So not only is it the 13 inch model, not the 15 inch one, but it also has the most basic basic specification lineup you can possibly arrange for a MacBook. This costs around $1,250 to $1,300, and this one costs about $1,500. So just from a price to performance standpoint, you're obviously getting more with the Windows laptop. That's pretty standard though. What else are you getting though? Are you getting the better build quality here or here? How about the better keyboard, the better operating system, the better performance overall, especially with the operating systems taken into account? I'm gonna talk about all that in this video. I purchased both of these laptops, by the way, out of pocket. So I am by no means biased, just for the sake of being biased because a company sent me one. I purchased both of these myself. And I'm gonna tell you exactly how I feel about both in this video. One of the first differences you'll notice between the Dell XPS and the MacBook Pro is the difference in build quality. So Dell took a unique approach here that decided to sandwich a carbon fiber slab in between two aluminum panels. The carbon fiber is a welcome feature. I think it sets this laptop apart from its competition, at least in the Windows space. It does though have a rubbery consistency. It doesn't feel as premium as I think it should. And it also is a fingerprint and oil magnet. On the MacBook Pro side though, the inside, the back panel, and the top panel are all made out of aluminum. You'll find a solid piece on top, same with the back and same with the front. This build is just I really think it's next to none. I think the build quality of the MacBook Pro is superior to that of the XPS 13s only because everything is just so well crafted. The MacBook Pro has just a very minimalistic appeal and I am okay with that. Just look at the back panel, how plain it is. Let's see, I'm gonna try to open both laptops with one finger and okay, XPS is moving a bit. Nope, oh, it didn't open. Okay, for the MacBooks, Seamless. Another superior quality of the MacBook Pro, it's enormous trackpad. Some people think it's a little too big, but I don't mind the extra real estate here. I mean, really this is wasted space other than that, unless you have like a fingerprint sensor or something down here. So I like the extra space. It's a very smooth trackpad. The glass is seamless. And I also like the little haptic engine they have built into these. Literally the opposite can be said of the XPS 13's trackpad. It does feel fairly smooth, but it is considerably smaller than the MacBooks. And I don't like the actual physical clicks of left and right on the track. But once you use a MacBook trackpad, it's really difficult to go back to anything else. The next set of differences I want to discuss have to do with these keyboards. Now MacBooks lately have gotten a bad rap over their butterfly switches, but there are two different generations you should keep in mind. The first generation was implemented in the 2015 and 16 MacBook 12 inch models. I think they're still implemented in the MacBook 12 inch series. And those switches really had no key travel, no actuation. It kind of felt like you were just typing on a solid desk. I was getting used to it, I'll admit, but now that I have enjoyed Gen 2 switches for quite a while, I've gotta say, I really like the feeling of this keyboard. It sounds weird, it doesn't look like you would enjoy this keyboard because the keys really don't move very far at all, but I like the feeling of these better than I do of the XPS 13's keyboard. It's, it's just my preference. I don't like the mushy feeling of the chiclet keyboard here on the XPS 13. Key travel is considerably higher, but it just, it feels like a typical membrane keyboard. You know, the keys kind of wobble from side to side and it, it just doesn't give you that satisfying feeling. Both keyboards are also fitted with LED backlights. The MacBooks are a bit more pronounced and they don't have too much bleed around the keys. The XPS 13s are the complete opposite. It really just depends on what you want aesthetically here. Now, when it comes to screens, this is where things are gonna get fairly subjective. If you want a touch screen, you gotta pay more for it on the XPS 13. If I had gotten this fully loaded, but without the touch screen, this laptop Laptop would literally cost as much as the MacBook Pro does. This is the base model, keep that in mind. So this 3200 by 1800 resolution IGZO panel uh, is a very beautiful display. I'd say the colors are fairly accurate. You can see the color gamuts here. In comparison, I like the touchscreen capabilities of the XPS 13. I think it's a nice addition and it's hard to go from a touchscreen laptop back to one that doesn't have that capability. But I will say that the trackpad of the MacBook Pro does make up for some of this loss. It gets considerably brighter than 
than the XPS 13s and is also slightly larger, but again, does not have any touchscreen capability. Another perk of the XPS 13 in this category is its near bezel-less display. This is what Dell calls its infinity display, and it's super beautiful. I've got to say, it's difficult to jump from this back to a laptop with average bezels like the MacBook Pro 13s. They just seem super thick, just like wasted space in comparison to what Dell has done with the XPS 13 and its 15 for that matter. Something else to note, the MacBook Pro suffers from a bit more backlight bleed on this IPS display, the bottom left hand corner is especially pronounced, the XPS 13 doesn't have too much of that at all. Regarding your concerns on battery life, the MacBook will generally last about an hour or so longer just with daily use. If you want to talk about just Netflix in general, using Google Chrome to stream Netflix will result in about 45 minutes or so of extra battery life on the MacBook Pro. Both of these displays at 50% brightness. And then if you want to look at it from just a software opportunistic standpoint, the XPS 13 has the ability to download the Netflix app from the Microsoft Windows Store, which means that you'll have considerably less overhead there than you will using a browser like Google Chrome, which has been known to utilize resources in questionable ways. So using Chrome to stream Netflix, Safari to stream Netflix, and also the Netflix app on the XPS 13, the XPS was actually able to pull out just a bit more battery life from the Netflix app because it does have less overhead than both Safari and Chrome do on the MacBook. Both of these laptops are sporting ultra-low power Kaby Lake CPUs, which means that H.265 encoding decoding on Netflix and high resolutions like 4K will result in slightly less battery being consumed in the long run. The MacBook Pro's i5 does fall a bit short of the XPS's i7, but these are literally almost the exact same CPU. They're the same cores, same thread count, one is just clocked a bit higher, binned a bit higher, which means slightly better performance out of the XPS, but I would say in most general cases, you won't tell a difference between the two. Once more, the MacBook Pro's Intel Iris Plus Graphics 640 gives it an extra punch in games. If you're willing to play it at resolution lower than native, something like 720p, you can actually maintain steady frame rates. As for the XPS, well, not too shabby in any game, including Dota 2. Other features of the XPS 13, kind of just a walk around review at this point, an LED notification light up front, in front of the trackpad which will turn orange if your battery life gets low, around 10% or so, on the right side of the laptop, an SD card slot, which I wish the MacBook had, this is really good for content creators, there's a speaker over here on the right side, also a USB 3.0 hub with power share. On the left side you'll find the power connector, a USB Type-C port with Thunderbolt 3 capabilities, another USB 3.0 hub, and a headphone jack, also a battery notification light, which is super cool to tell you how much battery you have left in your laptop. You don't even have to open it up to figure that out. The other speaker is on this side as well. With the MacBook Pro, uh, nothing really to show off here. Nothing on the bottom, nothing really on top except a shiny Apple logo that does not light up anymore. On the left side of the laptop, there are two USB Type-C ports and on the opposite side, just a single headphone jack. Kind of weird that there's a headphone jack on the MacBook Pro, but not on the iPhone 7. There are a few remedies here though, you could of course carry dongles around, which I just, yeah, it's kind of a fact of life if you have a MacBook with Type-C ports, uh, but these become just a hassle to carry around, especially if you have multiple dongles, and on top of that, if you lose one, you're kind of screwed. So a company called DotCase has, quote, revolutionized the way that we look at dongles and MacBook Pro accessibilities. So they've taken a case, literally it's like a faux leather case, and they've included I.O. ports for HDMI, Ethernet, USB Type-A, and an SD card slot. You even get two additional Type-C ports for whatever else. You could hook up like 10 dock cases together and have an unlimited supply of I.O. ports. I am surprised that no well-known company has done this yet for the 13-inch and 15-inch MacBook Pros. Dock case has uh, these sleeves for both model sizes, and uh, I've got to say, this is just a very cohesive product. I really like how simple it is to use. I am not the biggest fan of the fact that you have to plug in a small Type-C to Type-C connector to link your MacBook to the dock case, but hey, it's better than not having those I.O. ports. They've actually got a Kickstarter running that will end in a few days. They surpassed their goal a long time ago. This tells you how much hype there is behind this product, how simple it is to use, and just how effective it is as well. So if you want to contribute in any way, you can find their Kickstarter link in the video description, just something else to kind of throw into the mix uh, to show that, well, there are solutions coming out for the MacBook Pro peripheral issue. Now here's the fun part. I'm going to bring up both of these cameras and I'm gonna show you how terrible both of them are. Okay, so I'm recording with both laptops Tops, you can see how orientations are definitely different here. So the MacBook has a, just a very generic location for the camera up top and its resolution is subpar. Audio is not bad though. The XPS 13, totally different story. Not only is the audio not that great, but the camera positioning is super bad because of this like minimalistic bezel design that Dell's implemented, which I think is beautiful, but it does compromise camera location. That's why I have to awkwardly like point it up 
super high so you can see my face. I'm really not a fan of either of these and for laptops that cost over a thousand dollars each, they're just subpar. There's really no other word for them. Something else to note about the XPS 13 that I've documented in a dedicated video, check it out right here, is the coil wine. This laptop has insane coil wine and it's pretty much a common thing. Check forums regarding XPS 13s. A lot of people experience this issue and this laptop is no exception. The coil wine gets so loud sometimes. I really wish you could hear it in the microphone. Just have a listen to how bad this sounds. Both of these laptops do have built-in fans, of course. The XPSs do turn on a bit more and they're also slightly louder. I think that just has to do with the low overhead of OS X. Also, MacBooks have been known to get super hot before their fans turn on because Apple wants that super quiet appeal, right? This is a silent laptop or as silent as it can be, but that does result in your lap getting super hot sometimes. I'm serious, you could end up with third degree burns if you set this on your lap when it's under full load. Here's another distinction, sound quality coming from the speakers. The XPS 13s are decent, but they get pretty trebly past around 40% volume. The MacBook speakers are incredible. Here's the XPS 13s at full volume. And here are the MacBook Pro speakers at full volume. So I would say, yeah, MacBook Pro speakers win by a long shot. The last things to discuss with each of these then, their operating systems. At this point, it's difficult for me to advocate for a Windows 10 laptop on an ultra low power CPU like this, only because look, this fan will spool up if I open up something as simple as the taskbar. I'm not even joking. This thing will spool up and get pretty hot because CPU utilization reaches 50-60% just with Task Manager open. Whereas with OS X, things don't get very hot because the operating system is already low profile. I'm also a huge fan of optimization on Mac OS. I use Final Cut Pro all the time when I'm on the go. Also iMovie. iMovie still results in better render times than an equivalent file with Adobe Premiere on the XPS 13. And this is with 16 gigs of RAM, twice as much as this one, and an i7 versus an i5. My personal pick between the two, it's got to be the MacBook Pro. And it's only because I use this on the go. I'm a video editor. I do that for a living. And I want to have the best experience possible. This provides that. It's just much easier to use these programs with the very large trackpad, the excellent battery life, and the low system overhead. You might crucify me for saying that, but in a mobile sense, I do prefer Mac OS. I prefer a MacBook Pro over an XPS 13 or the like. I use Windows in the studio because, well, I need Windows to run some of the programs that I use to bring you content when I actually create stuff where I am now, but when I'm on the go, this is really all I need. Sure, you get better specs, more bang for your buck with a Windows laptop than you do with an equally priced MacBook or MacBook Pro. But that's not really the point here. The programs that I need as a content creator when I'm not in the studio are better suited on the MacBook Pro. In fact, you can't even use Final Cut Pro on a Windows laptop, so that kind of rules things out there. There are pros and cons to each, obviously different user bases, different intents. But for what I do as a content creator, I much prefer Final Cut Pro on the go. I also prefer the faster render times with that software here because you can't get it on the equivalent Windows laptop. If you like this video or at least appreciate my opinions, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. I do appreciate that. Be sure to give this one a thumbs down if you feel the complete opposite. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already. That's that red button down below. And also click the little bell so you get notifications when I upload videos like these. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.